somebody recently suggested that I should do a video about air gun books. And I thought that was a really good idea. So I'm going to do a quick video going through all of the books that I found useful uh, for research and just generally learning about air guns. So let's start with the most obvious ones. So this is uh, A Collector's Guide to Air Rifles by Dennis Hiller. It was uh, done in the 1980s. Um, it's a very good book. It's got loads of rifles in it. It's got quite a lot of older rifles and lots of variations of those, which is really good. And sometimes he has little patent drawings and these can be really important for learning about the history of uh, air gun development. Um, and what else has he got? So you have little details for each one. Um, uh, he does mention prices, but they, this obviously out of date now because it was the 1980s. But um, yeah, it's a really good book. So it's alpha, uh, alphabetically ordered, so it's very easy to look stuff up. It's got some exploded diagrams, parts diagrams. Um, yeah, it's a really good book. So that's got quite a lot in there. Um, at the back, it's got a little bit about pellet boxes. I mean, there's millions of pellet boxes out there, but um, he's got a nice little selection. I'm guessing this is his own collection. Um, a little bit about bell targets. So that's a really good book. I mean, this is one of the must-haves if you are an air gun collector. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have an index in it, but because it's done alphabetically, it's pretty easy to find what you want. So that's the first of the, what I call the essentials. What else have we got? We've got the Air Gun Book by John Walter. Again, this is uh, done in the 1980s. This includes pistols as well. And yeah, it's got quite a lot about ballistics and uh, the technical side of air guns, which uh, some people might find interesting. And then, yeah, he's got a good selection. And what he's got are these little um, uh, symbols. And I think he's got sort of value, um, design, how easy it is to work on, uh, whether it's suitable for target or for plinking. And he's given all of them different scores. So that's quite interesting. Um, and also what he does is he does a little bit of history about some of the companies. So for example, uh, FB Record, um, he's got a little little write-up about their company. And this has got an interesting fact, for example, that the factory that FB Record pistols were made on only had 20 men in it. So I've never read that anywhere else. That's quite interesting. I like those pistols as well. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a good book. It's got slightly more modern stuff than the last one because he's got a lot more target rifles, that sort of thing. What's he got at the back? Got some stuff about ammunition. And does he have an index? Yeah, I don't think he's got an index in here either, actually. But yeah, that's a really good book. So there are some books, uh, some air guns that, that are featuring this, some air rifles that feature in this that don't feature in the other one, and vice versa. So between those two, you get a lot of coverage. <clears throat> then there's the Blue Book of Air Guns, uh, which is by uh, Robert Beeman, a uh, very famous uh, American air gun importer. Um, that's quite a good book. He's got a lot about pricing in these. It's almost like a catalogue, but... Um, it's got so many air guns in this, it's quite good actually. Um, what he also does really well is he does write ups on companies. So, what's he got to find work about? So, Robert Beeman, he had a very good relationship. Well, this is a whole bit about Eisenberg Gaganau there. And he had some very good relationships with certain manufacturers. Um, so, he was able to put. Yeah, is that his bit about fine work about? He's able to put, yeah, there you go. So that's his whole history for fine work about, which is Westing, Westinger and Altenberger. Um, so because he was the importer of fine work about and Wirearc to the US, he built up really good relations with those companies and got to know the families that run them. So this is a very, very good write up of the history of fine work about and how they came about which you don't, might not read anywhere else. And he got it straight from the horse's mouth. So, um, yeah, so that's a good book. Um, he does 
put a value on stuff based on condition. So, you know, 20% original condition is worth a certain amount, going all the way up to 100% original condition is worth a certain amount. You know, it's mildly, um, mildly useful. Um, what he does do, though, is if something has got some variations to it, like a different type of stock or a rarer configuration, he'll put a value on that. So that can be useful if you're looking up something to know if the variant that you've got is more or less valuable than the normal one. OK, that's that one. That's a very big book. It's got a lot of pages, 440 pages. <coughs> And then a slightly older book um, that's really good is Smith's Standard Encyclopedia of Gas, Air and Spring Guns of the World. Now, the other two were written in the 80s. The Blue Book of Air Guns is, I think, current. Um, this was written in the 1950s. Uh, it's an interesting book. So it's got history of air guns, how they developed from blow guns, blow darts, to very old antique um, uh, PCP type rifles. Um, crack and bush. Uh, yeah, so a good bit about the early history of air guns. And then what he does is he breaks it down into different chapters almost. So I think he's got a bit about German guns and a bit about UK guns. And um, that's a nice gallery gun there. Um, so it's a bit haphazard as to how it's laid out, but it's a very, very good resource. And because it's written in the 50s, a lot of the older vintage guns weren't hugely old by that period. So he's got a very interesting take on them. Um, yeah, so that's a good book as well. Mm. Yeah, I like that one. There's certain certain guns in, uh, in that I've only found in here that I haven't found anywhere else. So again, that will contain some stuff that the other books don't have. <clears throat> so that, they're the obvious ones for rifles and then when it comes to pistols you've got Dennis Hiller's uh, A Collector's Guide to Air Pistols uh, this is the third edition these are nice little books and they contain pretty much all of the main pistols you'd want to seek out if you were a vintage air pistol collector all the favourites um, with a little bit about the companies um, yeah, this is a nice little book. So that's a really good one just to get a broad sense of the sort of stuff that is out there if you want to start collecting vintage air pistols. Yeah, that's nice. And what's it got the back? Again, I don't think this one. Oh, hello. Yeah, no, this, <laughs> this one it has an index. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So, yeah, that's a, a, a really good. Uh, book for vintage air pistols. Slightly more specialist book for air pistols is the Webley Air Pistols book uh, by Gordon Bruce. So if you collect vintage Webley pistols then you should really get this book. So this breaks down all the variations and development and it's a very complicated um, timeline the, the Webley pistols development lots of little changes and subtle differences as they became um, they sort of peaked with their uh, brilliance of how well they were made and then started to cut corners and try and make them cheaper and the, so lots and lots of changes along the way <clears throat> the thing this is really useful for is getting a date on some Webley pistols because once they stopped doing uh, serial numbers, it was very difficult to um, put a date on them. So what this does is, if you look at the changes or the features on your particular pistol, it, you can work out the date from when those changes came into effect. So it's very, very useful. I've looked up the date on a, a few of my a few of my air pistols that didn't have serial numbers and my Webleys. <clears throat> so yeah, that's a very good book. Um, very nicely made. Yeah, so it takes it all the way up to the um, hurricane, I think. Oh, it's got a bit about pelletins. Yeah, that's great. So that's the Webley Air Pistols book by Gordon Bruce. <clears throat> and then the Bible. 
if you ask me, for air pistol collectors is the Encyclopedia of Spring Air Pistols by Professor John Griffiths. This is an amazing book. So it's basically every single spring pistol that was ever made. And there are a lot of them. So he um, shows you all the variations um, of each pistol. A nice description on how they work. Um, and what I do like are the uh, collector's notes. So each pistol will have a description. You'll have a bit about the company. So the Daisy, for example, there. Nice bit about the Daisy company. But then the collector's notes will tell you whether a certain pistol is, is collectible, whether it's rare, how many were made, um, if a certain variant is rarer than others. That's really useful. So the amount of times I've seen a pistol come up for, on auction and I haven't really known what it is, and I've looked through here and I've found it, and then I can find out whether it's rare or not, or interesting, or something I want to buy. Um, yeah, that's a really, really good book. And then towards the end, he's got I think he put it there are uh, models that yeah, he's got a really nice couple of pages of 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 uh, boxes then there's uh, pistols that no one knows what they are anonymous they're not marked and people haven't exactly found out what they are um, and then there are the ones that never went into production so there's patent drawings that didn't get made and they're really interesting so sometimes a company will come up with an idea they'll patent it but then they never actually make it and what he has done, John Griffiths and other a few other collectors have done as well, is actually make working models of uh, an air pistol that didn't exist just from the patent drawings and that's fascinating to me. So they look at the patent drawings, they work out how to make it and they actually make working <coughs> pistols based on that. Um, that for example is a really good picture of a case for a Wesley Richards highest possible and I bought one of those and um, was only seeing the case in this book that told me that it was a real genuine case and there's hardly any ever uh, surviving so it was really useful for me to be able to uh, verify that the one I was going to buy had an original case. Um, nice bit about boxes so he can show you what boxes came with what pistols so that's really nice. Um, That's an amazing book. So yeah, this is out of all these all these books, this is the one I've been in the most because it's so useful to be able to find out exactly uh, what model you've got or you're looking at and um, how rare it is and how much it's worth. That isn't in print anymore. They do come up occasionally on 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 the internet for sale. Um, the other ones are quite easy to get hold of, um, either second hand or some of them are still in print. But that, that's a little bit more difficult, <clears throat> but well worth getting, if you can find one. What else have we got? So then there's magazines. So <clears throat> obviously there's Airgun World. Uh, they've got, and they have had uh, a collectible section at the back of that magazine for ever, and they still do now. So these go back all the way to 1979, and then all of those... 40 odd years of, of magazines, They've each one has had a, a collectibles section in the back or a vintage airgun section in the back. So they're worth getting and getting the old ones as well. Uh, and Air Gunner, exactly the same. Air Gunner has always had a, a vintage bit in the back. Um, yeah, uh, so they're, they're really useful. They're vintage uh, or collectible articles in the back, very well written. And um, I don't think they ever repeat themselves, so they always try and come up with new um, articles. So there's a wealth of um, old articles there. Unfortunately, they're not able to print a book that has all those articles in them because I think there's copyright issues to do with who uh, owns the rights to maybe the graphics or the lettering and all sorts of different uh, the typesetting, all this sort of stuff. So they can't do that, which is a shame. But you can get them all... Um, you know, you can buy old copies of them, <clears throat> and they're still in production today. So you can subscribe to Air Gunner and Air Gun World, uh, and you'd always get a little vintage section in them, 
What else have we got? New Zealand Air Gun. That's quite a rare magazine. Someone gave me one of these. Uh, if you can find one or some, they're all good. They're all um, very good articles um, about old air guns. And what else? Guns Review Magazine. They always had a section, an air gun section in them. Um, but you end up getting a whole magazine for one little section. So they can be useful. Oh, this is interesting. So this is a book by an American guy called uh, Larry Hanush. Um, not sure how you pronounce it. Um, called Pneumatic Reflections. And these are articles that he wrote for an American magazine, I believe. Um, and they put them all together into... Was it the Air Gun Journal, possibly? Um, they put all the articles together into one book, and I absolutely love this thing. This is great. So he's got some very interesting articles um, about various uh, vintage air guns or um, classic air guns, and they're really good. Um, yeah, it's a shame we can't do this with all of the stuff that John Atkins and John Malusky and uh, Harvey and all the guys who have, have ever done Les Herridge have done for air gun world and air gunner over the years because uh, that'd be really useful <clears throat> so this is really good and there's certain things again that i've only really found in here um that weren't in other uh, source material um yeah and there's stuff that i've never heard of so this was really uh, a bit of an eye opener this there was loads of things in here that i hadn't seen before or hadn't really come up um so yeah, I, mean, I think it's still in print. So we did a thing in Britain where a load of us chipped, uh, you know, paid in advance. We put in a big order to get them sent over from America because the postage was was a lot. So you might as well, I think you had to get like a minimum order to make it worthwhile with the postage. So a load of us got these. Um, so I think you can still get them. Um, I'll put details to all this stuff in the um in the description so you can look up anything you're interested in but yeah that's a really good uh, resource so that's magazines and then you get uh, slightly older books <clears throat> um, so you know going to older books and then also books about older more antique air guns more specialist stuff so this is an interesting book this is called the complete air gunner and it was I think written in 1907 uh, yeah, first published in 1907, and you can still buy this now. I think this, this reprint version is still available, and it's a book teaching people about air guns back then. So 1907, and it's sort of teaching them how to shoot. It's got some pictures of the Streatham School Shooting Club. Um, it's really interesting, you know, if you're into shooting as well as um, collecting, which I am, that you know, you can find some interesting tips. Um, think is this yeah this is the one that's very pro bsa i think they basically you know they really push forward the bsa rifles which is fair enough they were very accurate so anyway that's well worth worth reading so some adverts at the back yeah if you're interested in really old stuff i mean this is 1907 so this is contemporary view of uh, air gunning when a lot of these guns were first made so that's really interesting uh, <laughs> ag's book of the rifle yeah, that was when was that? that was the fifties, I think. So this is nineteen forty-eight. Um, this is about all types of rifle shooting, but he does have a section on air guns, which is quite interesting. And this has got that story about the Britannia shooting the bowler hat um, that's quite famous. This is one. I think this is where it was um, uh, reported to be further than it actually was at eighty yards. But that, that's an interest. The, the air gun section in this is interesting, and again. It's, it's uh, done in the late 40s, so it's an interesting view of that time. What else have we got? The Arms and Armour series. Um, Air Guns and Other Pneumatic Arms by Arne Hoff. Uh, this is more to do with very old um, antique air guns. It does have a bit about the history, but it's more about the very old um, compressed air, uh, pump-up uh, pneumatic arms. I think it's got a little bit about spring piston rifles. There we go. Um, he calls them strike pump <laughs> uh, rifles. Uh, yeah, so that's the more antique side of um, 
air guns, which I find interesting, but I haven't ventured into it yet. It's quite an expensive area. And also in the UK, some of these are very, very high powered, so you know you can't necessarily shoot them um, under UK laws. So I mean, I always want to shoot stuff that I own. Hey, there's some beautiful stuff in there. So that's a really good book about very old, beautiful antique air guns. Um, if you're interested in that, that's a good one. Um, uh, air guns by Eldon G. Wolf. Oh yeah, so this is an American publication, quite well known. Mainly about, well, it's got a large section about gallery guns in it, American gallery guns. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in very early, mid 18, 1800s, um, get, you know, crank, crank, uh, crank wound or uh, bugle spanner or side lever, hebel spanner type gallery guns. Um, he's got a lot of stuff about that. It's kind of American centric, so there's some early early daisies in there. It's um, but it's very useful. It's a very interesting book. And yes, yeah, so that's it on the books. And then I suppose there's catalogues. So you can learn a lot from catalogues. So um, there's a company called Cornell Publications who reprint old air gun catalogues. Um, they're based in America and you can get some very interesting old catalogues that will tell you a lot of stuff so for example this is the Air, Air Rifle Headquarters catalogue from 1967 by Robert Law um, I find this particularly interesting because it is there's a lot of target rifles early match rifles and this is a contemporary uh, catalogue for them so this, this catalogue was written when they were available so they've got really good reviews and um, you know, hearing the sales patter from the time they were out is very interesting between these different models. So you know, you've got the Diana stuff, you've got the fine, fine work bow stuff, um, and you've got the Walther uh, and Schutz. Um, very interesting, yeah. Um, and also the beginning of this has got a lot of, I think it's designed to sort of convince Americans that air guns are you know, worthy of consideration because I don't think they had the same uh, fascination with them as we did in the UK. So I think it tells, it always um, emphasizes that they don't make any noise compared to uh, bullet guns uh, and they're extremely accurate and it sort of mentions that quite a lot. But I find this fascinating to see how they describe these guns at the time that they were available because now we sort of look back you know, we've got match rifles, surviving match rifles, and we're um, analysing them based on, you know, how we feel about them now. But it's very interesting when they first came out and they were cutting edge technology, how they uh, um, sold them. Yeah, I really like that. Um, <clears throat> ah, brilliant. Uh, the Book of the BSA Air Rifle. So this is from 1911. This is another reprint from Cornell Publications. This is lovely. So this is almost like a little bit like that um, that last one in that it's got a lot of information about how to shoot. Um, information about pellets. Yeah, it gives you lots of um, tips on how to uh, your sight alignment, your trigger control, how they work. People are much more interested in how things work back then. I think. Um, great stuff about the sites that were available this has been useful for me because I've got a few of these sites and it was only from looking in here that I could find out what they were I think there's uh, site covers as well um, yeah that's a, that's a great little piece um, also shows the rifles that were available at the time and other things like targets and whatnot so that's lovely that's almost like a little book as opposed to a catalogue um, you can learn a lot about that time period uh, from that. Um, this is a reprint, a really nice reprint of a 1902-1903 uh, Oscar Will Venus Waffenwerk catalogue. This is a beautiful thing. Um, and I got that for the air guns in it, which are gorgeous. Um, I think I've got that one. And yeah, it's very useful this. So for example, one of these came up for sale somewhere and I 
I couldn't work out what it was. Me and my friend couldn't work out what it was. He told me about it, but he thought it was a gem or something. Uh, and it was only looking at this catalogue that I managed to work out what it actually was. It's quite a rare, it's a universal rifle, it's quite rare. So that was really useful. And then there was another one. This came up for sale at an auction uh, in Germany. And it's a bolt action, sort of Mauser type children's military trainer with no markings on it. Um, and I couldn't work out what that was. And then I found it in this and I realised, okay, that's what it is. Um, that sold for a lot of money and I didn't get it in the end, but it was good to know what it was. Um, so that's what, how these things can be useful. Um, and then some beautiful rifles in here. That's lovely. And then some interesting bell targets. So one of these is electronic, is it that one? Well, not electronic, but yeah, basically wherever you hit it, It'll, it, a number pops up depending on what ring is like a mechanical thing really interesting so I, I translated the description of it and then found out exactly what it was anyway obviously I really like this catalog so that's really nice and then what else have we got <clears throat> oh that's just a army and navy um, catalog from 1907 and I just got this for the uh, air guns really there's a little page of air guns in it so I just got it for that but reading through the rest of it's very interesting there's weird targets and uh, all sorts of interesting things that's good and then Webley pistols so that obviously obviously that's a reprint um, I've got that because I've got the mark one pistol and also the Lovely service rifle, but that was interesting reading these um, reviews, these customer reviews from the time. Um, it makes it makes for an interesting interesting view of it all. Um, okay, so that's it. So we've got books, um, and we've got magazines, and we've got catalogs, and they're all very useful. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.